good morning students today we are going to understand chapter number 5 of your book flamingo indigo okay and we have already done introduction of this chapter today we will understand some more points related to this chapter and then we will go through line by line explanation students indigo by louis fisher let's start with the chapter you know what is indigo in hindi we call it neel okay you can see over here neel that we use for uh, that use in uh, clothes and in clothes to make your clothes white and very vibrant okay so this chapter this chapter indigo can you recognize this picture this picture is related to champaran movement and we can see over here gandhi gandhi ji and he was struggling for the poor peasants of champaran over here and one more thing is to be noted over here that champaran was the first mo movement in uh, in gandhi ji's life in india okay although he has uh, did uh, many movements in south african all but in india it was his first movement and this movement was you can say twist for indian independence indian independence why because it was turning point for india okay this movement champaran movement after champaran gandhi ji did what uh, kheda satyagraha bardoli okay but champaran movement was the first movement okay and that movement was considered as a turning point in indian independence why because Gan because here here from this movement gandhi ji came to know that britishers were oppressing what peasants farmers exploiting indians and that was the basic reason why he urged for britishers leave from india okay so mahatma gandhi believed in humanity and its principles tolerance without violence okay so first of all we will understand the author who is the author of this chapter louis fisher was born on 29 february 1896 in philadelphia pan uh, pennsylvania usc first he worked as a school teacher then he served as a volunteer in the british army during the first world war and then he made a career as a journalist and wrote for the new york times the saturday review and for european and asian publications but one point is to be noted that he was follower of mahatma gandhi as a journalist he lived through and reported the second world war he was a jewish american who was greatly influenced by gandhi ji's use of non violence and spiritualism as a polit as a political tools he wrote highly acclaimed books on gandhi and lalin okay so you can see picture of louis fisher he died at the age of 73 on 15 january 1917 in princeton new jersey usa okay so we have already gone through the uh, we have already gone through about the author now we will see what now we will see theme of the chapter the chapter indigo emphasizes the fact that effective leadership whose effective leadership was shown in the chapter mahatma gandhi can solve any kind of problems without any harm to anybody this chapter deals with the way mahatma gandhi solved the problem of poor share croppers of champaran in a non violent way then we have understood over here message of the chapter the story indigo highlights the unequal economic system that existed during colonial british rule actually peasants farmers were forced to grow what indigo as the chief commercial crop was indigo in bihar in champaran the landlords compelled all the tenants means tenants were farm, farmers were tenants to plant 15% of their indigo i'll clear you in the chapter and surrendered the entire indigo harvesters rent this was done by long term contract contract this was done by long term 
contract so it resulted in indian peasants suffering while the british planters exploited them it also highlights the importance of gandhi's decision to take up their case which exposed the unjust system prevailed in bihar so the story let's start with the story the story summary the story indigo written by louis fisher narrates gandhi's struggle for the poor peasants of champaran the peasants were share croppers with the british planters fine according to an old agreement the peasants had to produce indigo on 15% of the land and give it as a rent to the landlords around 1917 it was told that germany had developed synthetic indigo means up to 1917 landlords were taking indigo from peasants but in 1917 it was told that britishers did not need indigo why because where they were exporting in germany and germany had developed synthetic indigo so germany did not need indigo so the british planters now go now no longer desired the indigo indigo crop to release to release sorry to release the peasants from the old 15% agreement they demanded compensation from them most of the illiterate peasants agreed to it because they did not know the reality however others refused lawyers were engaged to go to the court at a time on the request of rajma shukla a share cropper gandhi ji appeared in champaran okay gandhi ji appeared in champaran why because she, uh, because rajkumar shukla followed mahatma gandhi everywhere first of all mahatma gandhi did not agree okay because in those days in those uh, in those days gandhi was busy in meetings and all but when he requested on his entreaty on rajkumar shukla's entreaty gandhi ji appeared in champaran he fought for the poor peasants a long battle for one year and managed to get justice and managed to get justice for them the peasants now got courage at last at last mahatma gandhi taught them the courage and become and became aware of their rights along with the political and economic struggle gandhi ji worked on the social level also he made arrangements for the education health and hygiene of the families of poor peasants by teaching the lesson of self reliance okay and it was one of the ways to forward the struggle for indian independence students when gandhi reached where in champaran <coughs> many lawyers and peasants groups came in large numbers to support him the lawyers first of all were not agree but lawyers accepted the fact that their charges were high because they were taking charges from peasants and for poor peasant it will be irksome gandhi rebuked them for collecting big fee from the share croppers and finally we have come to know that he managed to get justice after a year long battle for the peasants he also made arrangements for the education health and hygiene for the families of poor peasants he gave them the lesson of self reliance and it was one of the ways to forward the struggle for indian independence so self reliance uh, share uh, share cropping system and indian independence all were knitted together so mahatma uh, one of the famous quotation of mahatma gandhi i object to violence because when it appears to do good the good is only temporary okay the evil it does is permanent so mahatma gandhi object to violence and for that reason he used non violence as a political tool okay seven social sins politics without principles mahatma gandhi believed in principles wealth without work pleasure without conscience knowledge without character commerce without morality science without humanity and virtue without sacrifice fine and we have gone through this chapter champaran movement 1918 because uh, this movement uh, took almost one year of mahatma gandhi's life was gandhi ji's biggest achievement basically this was a movement against british landlords who forced farmers to grow indigo and sell them at low or fixed prices this was a non violent protest <coughs> led by gandhi he managed to win this battle and provide relief to the peasantry okay so please go through this chapter understand it and 
collect the data of champaran movement so it will be easy for you to understand the chapter all the chapters story is very wonderful because we have wonderful characters over here in this chapter rajkumar shukla okay he literate but presulate then servants at rajinder prasad presidents rajinder prasad gandhi ji uh, you can say main character okay and then we will see how he how he agreed on the entity of rajkumar shukla and he went champar and all we will see in the chapter okay fine we will see in the explanation of the chapter thank you have a nice day and tomorrow i'll explain you line by line explanation of this chapter thank you have a nice day